Um, someone says, if you could re recommend some rendering engines to master, what would they be? I mean, at the end of the day, I don't think render engines really matter, but what are your personal preferences? Like, what, what render engines do you use? Like, in your personal... Well, first, of, first of all, just use whatever you have. Yeah. Just whatever you have available. Arnold is built in within within Maya, so just use that. You can't really look at a render and tell which engine it was done with, like it. No, not yeah. anymore. And if you've got really amazing looking work, someone can tell you know the stuff. So you'll be able to just translate those fundamentals into whatever software you use. Every company is going to have their own renderer. Some people, some companies literally build their own renderers. Um, but the fundamentals are all the same. Yeah. For my own personal work, I, I use Arnold, but recently, as of like the past year or so, I've been using Redshift and like the speed increases are ridiculous. Yeah. So. Um, ridiculous. Um, I don't even have like a beefy computer, but like it's, it, it's crazy, but it works exactly like how Arnold does all physically based. Um, yeah, so I've been loving using uh, Redshift. So Mostly Redshift, I've been loving the render times. Redshift in Maya, right? Like you don't use a... St like Redshift doesn't have a standalone, does it? Not that I know of. I've okay. just been using it within Maya. Yeah, yeah so I've been using enough. Maya and, and Redshift, yeah. Sick. Um, how would you suggest students build connections with industry artists if their institution doesn't have educators with industry experience? LinkedIn. Yeah. LinkedIn. Um, you know, it's, it's a bit more difficult doing it, you know, a bit more personally, um, you know, during COVID, but this is, this is a true story. I, me and other friends at our uni, whilst we were at uni would email on LinkedIn or whatever, or, or on Facebook messenger. I think we had some of them. We would literally say, can we buy you a pint if we can just have a ch have a chat with you after work so we would find out you know what what pub would you like to go to we'll come to you we'll buy you a couple of pints um and we sort of met them very briefly before so it wasn't kind of that random but yeah. it was going out there and trying to put yourself out there and you know it might not necessarily seem like the right thing or the most comfortable thing to do but trying to put yourself out there as much as possible not just online because if you can build up this, this connection with people, their work, they're literally working in the companies that you want to work for. And so when it comes to the hiring, most companies will turn around and say internally, we're hiring for this position. Does anyone know of anyone decent? Um, and if you have a connection and if you have like a relationship with people, you're going to be right at the top of this pile of hundreds of applications that go on, onto, onto a website. Yeah. So I'd say like try and build up as many connections personally as possible. Send your work in, try and get feedback and don't just send stuff to people. Well, this is just what I try to do. Don't just send your work into people for the sake of just getting it in front of them. If you're asking for feedback and they give you the feedback, the next time you speak to them, do the feedback. You know, oh yeah, that's the most insulting thing. <laughs> it's like, what's the, you know, otherwise you're just messaging people for the sake of messaging people. And you know, then if you can keep doing that, you can build up a rapport with people. Um, the rookies is, is amazing. Um, the exposure you can get off of that is, is great. LinkedIn, um, just generally having a presence online and trying to get out of this habit of, I don't want to show it yet, it's not ready or it's yeah. not good enough. Um, just generally trying to put yourself out there. You need um, to get used to getting like feedback on your work as well. Like you need to be, you need to mentally like prepare yourself to get your work shot down by professionals. Cause that's how, that's how the industry runs. Like we get feedback all the, the time. I mean, there's a thing called dailies and it's called dailies for a reason. And people aren't turning around and saying your work is so crap. All of this is crap. I hate it. Yeah. Um, they're going to say, I like this. I don't like this. How about we go in this direction uh, or whatever? You don't have the option at work. Um, to but say, ignoring the feedback. <laughs> yeah. Um, and also you don't have the option to say, 
uh, I don't want to. Do, I don't want to show it today. <laughs> I'm, I'm feeling shy. You know. Yeah. If you can, you if imagine you get in that. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. You're paying me, but I don't want to show you my work today. I'm not ready. I don't. Yeah. The artistic, you know, it's. I don't feel it today. You know. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, it's so funny. Like the thing you mentioned about, like you know, messaging people, right? Because like. Mm-hmm. The reason we ended up becoming friends is you randomly messaged me like years ago, mm. and here we are. That's so funny. It's weird. Mm. <laughs> but yeah, I think yeah, I don't. I think it's totally fine with like messaging professionals and like asking for feedback. But yeah, like if you do ask for their feedback, definitely respect it. Like don't. But I've had so many people that have asked me for feedback, and then not done it, and then showed me their work again. I'm like. It's the same. And then I'll give them feedback again and they just won't change it. And it just completely kills your motivation to help this artist. And what makes it even worse is like, I'll remember these people. (laughs) Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So if you're going to push yourself out there, keep in mind that people will remember you if you stand out in like a negative way as well. Um, Stream through the comments, the loading comments. Oh, yeah. Where do you see the industry shifting in the process in the coming years? Virtual production, real-time content assets. Yeah, what do you think about the real-time thing? I think it's amazing. Th- yeah? It's amazing. I mean, you know, just from what you can see online, some of these, it's, it's bridging the gap between real-time and, and offline. I think it's just, I, I think it's only, you know, it's only going to be better for filmmaking. You know, I guess when green screens first came out, um, you know, revolutionized, you know, the way filmmaking is made and just like how the virtual LED walls is, it, that's going to change the way filmmaking is made. I think it's really exciting. Yeah, for sure. I think it's, you know, you can, rather than going to a company and saying, we've shot this, can you do the visual effects for us? I think, you know, by going up to a company, they can shoot everything for you. They can do every, all, all the posts. Um, and also the actual technical process of, of making assets, you know, you can, you can do the pre you can do rough models or whatever, and you can pass that down the pipe and pick it up to do, you know, correct topology, high res textures or whatever. I think it's very exciting where it's actually going to, where it's going to go. I don't know. Yeah. I also think people do need to keep in mind is like, just because they see like, I don't know, Mandalorian has done it once. It doesn't mean like every film is now suddenly this way like these sorts of big transitions do take time to happen like it's 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 funny because like a lot of people online they'll see like some marketing and then they'll just suddenly assume this is how everything is done now and it's like now uh, these these big transitions do take time like we can't just suddenly stop all film production and then become like the unset thing uh oh, yeah, for sure what do you see as kind of like the future or like say the next big shift in, in say assets or just visual effects in general? Um, I don't know. Cause I, I am friends with like a few of the, the asset dudes on Mandalorian. And I asked them like, do you think this is the future? And they all say yes. So they're some of the best artists I know. So I kind of accept that, that, that this could be a thing. So I have been looking into doing like some unreal stuff, but I don't know. I don't, I don't see it happening like immediately, but you know, it could be cool. I don't know. I'm what not... You... Sorry, what's that? No, you carry on, sorry. Oh, I'm not the most tech-savvy person, so I'm not really mm. at the forefront of technology. <laughs> like, mm. I mean, I only have gotten into doing ZBrush recently, so it's not like I'm at the forefront. But so, what were you saying? What would you say is that kind of like the biggest shift in, in the way we work? So, yeah, there's the real-time stuff. Um, could you see, what do you see as the thing that would say threaten, you know, artists or whatever? So like AI or outsourcing, outsourcing. have you spoken about much of that um, it, it's on your channel? A little bit. It, it's funny because people are like, are you worried about AI taking your job? And I'm not because I think outsourcing will take it first. So but I don't know. I kind of think like the industry might transition because outsourcing is becoming a bigger and a bigger thing. I kind of, for me, like I have discussed with some other friends, I kind of, we kind of do feel that it might get to the point that because smaller industry, 
no, smaller indie studios are now creating triple A content, right? So I can imagine like there will always be a job for us, but it might not be the same as it is now. Like we could end up like you see like, you know, Vitaly Bulgorov just decided to make his own game. So he just made a triple A quality game. So I can kind of see like um even though aut like outsourcing might become bigger and bigger, our job might change more to the fact that we either become more management, like leadership based, or we focus on smaller indie teams doing, uh, you know, like making our own games and stuff like that. So I can kind of see that changing. For sure. I think more and more outsourcing is only going to be inevitable. Yeah. You know, there's so much outsourcing that's happening now. And, you know, you and it's, look at the, tre mm. the trends and there's only ever going to be more. And it's not the just our industry, are, by the way. This is all industries. Like, it's a global market that people have to consider. But yeah, sorry. Sure. Sure. And there's so many people that want to get into the industry, you know, yeah. that might be worried about this. Um, and the questions I like to have for myself, and I've had questions, you know, with, with friends that, you know, like to talk about this as well, is, you know, it's only, this is only ever going to, there's going to be more and more outsourcing. So questions, you know, what can I do? You know, what will make, what can I do so my work can't be outsourced? Yeah. And, you know, what, what will stand, you know, the test of time. And it's, you know, as you said, it's, it's the management. Yeah. It's, it's those creative decisions. And yeah, you can have some AI, um, I've seen, I can't remember where it was. I think it was on YouTube. Um, we could put a few photos in and it can generate a mesh for you. And then it can then reseed it and kind of generate variations on that. Or you can yeah. do some really arbitrary paint brushes and it can do some concept art for you or, yeah. um, you know, like the facial replacements or whatever. But I think, you know, just being those, that decision maker, you know, deciding whether something should look like this or feel like this or just making those creative decisions or leadership those can never be outsourced yeah i also feel like it's like to kind of combat it is you always have to be accept the fact you always have to keep learning where like if you do stop learning and get comfortable i feel you are at the biggest risk with your career long term i feel so like for me i kind of want to move more towards maybe the concepts direction which kind of i guess because if i just like for example the people that just copy a car like that job can easily be outsourced like everything gets photo scanned now like so that sort of stuff but the creative the creative aspect is definitely the harder part to outsource so i i do feel people shouldn't get too comfortable with their positions for sure for sure always always learning and never assume that you know i know this so yeah I know it, you know, always, always being inquisitive and just trying to learn as much as you can is, yeah, is, is only going to have a future proof for yourself. Yeah. I've, I've noticed even with like the level of students these days, like, holy shit, <laughs> like the level of students these days know more than I do. I'm like, okay, that's, but at least I have a bit of industry experience to, to keep me employed for a bit. But, yeah, uh, exactly. but yeah, like it's funny. Cause yeah, one of the, uh, the, the junior we hired at Dina, like the dude has like knows did this amazing hard surface robot, but then he had like, you know, Marvelous, like a jacket done in Marvelous. I'm like, oh, I never even opened Marvelous once. And the dude did texture look dev. I'm like, fuck, this guy already knows more than I do. So, uh, yeah, you got to keep learning or these, uh, the juniors will, will take over soon. <laughs> Literally. I mean, like, you know, Marvelous, you know, for example, like the quality of clothing, like that you can do, you know, even at an entry level or, you know, and above. It's crazy. Like people would literally have to start off with, you know, a cube extrude out to make a jacket yeah. and then start manually sculpting these creases. Like creases is just so hard to sculpt. But like yeah. now, if you know how to use Marvelous, you can create probably better than something that's sculpted more realistic creases, um, you know, as a base. And like that's, you know, an example of like technology, you know, like you know, just evolving and just like making um, people's artwork even better, which means you've got to keep on your feet, you know, as someone that's in the industry, consistently learning yeah. um, and keeping up with trends and, and softwares and things like that. Yeah, exactly. In saying that, I still don't think Blender's going to be taking over anytime soon. 
<laughs> just just to quickly right. shut that down before that that starts off. <laughs> so many people. So what's what's like the ratio of of your audience? Are, are most people kind of interested in just modeling, just Maya, or just generally like you know asset creation? Um, yeah, most of them I think uh, like I do have a de like a decent amount of Blender users in the chat as well, but they they understand well. Hopefully, most of them understand that it's all just about asset creation and like skills are super transferable, pretty much. But mm -hmm. um, but yeah, like a lot of people don't kind of really understand that like swapping a pipeline is hard in like a big established studio, and that's pretty much all it's about. Like it's never about this program is better than this. It's simply like the foundation is set, so to rock that foundation is kind of uh, problematic and loses a lot of money. Yeah, there might be one software that's better, but just because it's better, it doesn't mean, yeah, a company is, is going to change it. Yeah, exactly. But I can see, I think Blender is amazing for concept. I think if you're a concept artist, it's definitely the tool of choice. It's, it is a good software. Their community just needs to chill out a bit. Calm t <laughs> just calm down a bit. Um, I'm, yeah. I'm not going to lie, and I feel dirty for saying it, but I've thought about maybe opening it up. <laughs> <laughs> that that's the thing, right? You you have this weird, you have this this feeling of like guilt about <laughs> opening the program. Yeah. Yeah. But it is, it is a good program. Like I do use it for like the um to do like machine parts and stuff. And I I do see like pros with the pro like with the program. But like I also see cons. And I think that's what something that people have to keep in mind is no software is perfect. Like there's pros and cons to everything. It's just whatever whatever you need to get the job done at that time. And for us at work, our job involves using the programs that are provided, which is your, tends to be Maya and Mario. Yeah, exactly. I mean, software will always change. So yeah, like, for if sure. You just know that if, you, if your skills are based on knowing one software really well, you know, it's... It, you know... Software will change, and you know you could be, you know, someone could replace you if you just know that software. Yeah, exactly. Someone said, Zach, not the dark side. <laughs> oh, you're reading the chat. <laughs> yeah. Oh god. Yeah, it it is a good program. I I do enjoy it, but I also use Maya. I use ZBrush as well. Like I think skills are super transferable, and that's one of the main things I think people should do is like learn the foundation of the skills themselves, not the software.